it's a hot take to be okay to want to be a housewife slash want a wife who wants to be a housewife. If you cheat, it's okay, just don't tell me. It's okay to ask how much a man makes slash what his career is. Welcome back to The Walk Podcast. If you're new here, my name is Sam. I post all things lifestyle, faith, and occasional travel vlog every now and then. This channel is essentially a video diary of my life, and so I'm really happy you're here. What you're listening to or watching right now is The Walk Podcast. I started this podcast about a year and a half ago. It didn't have a name. It didn't have an end goal in mind. I was just making these videos to talk, and I was essentially talking about my walk through life, things that I was learning, things that I was going through, and that's how this podcast came to be. So I post these podcast episodes every other Wednesday on my YouTube channel, and they also go live at the very same time over on Spotify. So I will leave the links to all of those platforms down below, my Spotify, as well as my Instagram, my TikTok, all the things, and your support over on all those platforms really does mean the world to me. Like I said, this podcast is on Spotify, and like I always say, I do absolutely appreciate when you guys rate the show over there. I will never tell you, hey, rate it five stars if you don't think it's worth five stars, but any rate definitely helps. It helps push the podcast forward so other people can be exposed to it and also lets me know how you guys are feeling about the podcast. So I'm really happy you're here. I think I said that five times, but I'm just happy you're here, okay? So today we have a fun episode and I'm really excited. I want to switch it up a little bit. I don't want every episode to be me just like preaching at you or, you know, you don't always have to learn something from these podcasts. I want them also to be fun Um, And so we are going to be going through your relationship and dating hot takes. I asked you guys over on Instagram to submit some of your hot takes and you guys definitely did. There are so many of them and I don't promise to get through all of them because we would probably be here for a while, but maybe some of them are repeats. So maybe we'll get through more than we think. Um, And I kind of wish I had like somebody to bounce these off of with in this episode. So maybe next time I do this. I'll do it with like a a friend or something because I think that that would be fun. I haven't had anybody on the podcast since like episode three when it was barely a podcast. Um, And my best friend and her husband came over and we went through red flags and green flags in dating and I got their opinions and it was really fun. So I definitely want to do something like that again sometime soon. I haven't really looked through these completely. I kind of just scanned and I saw a handful of them. And so what I will say is that everything I'm going to say is my opinion. So many of these are so subjective and just, it's just, it's opinion based, right? So I'm not claiming to be right. I'm not claiming to know everything because I certainly don't, but um, that's my disclaimer. Had to put that in there. Um, But I don't even, I'm just going to start all the way from the bottom and we'll just kind of work our way up. And thank you to everyone who submitted um, a hot take. I really appreciate it. Some of them I'm not going to actually read because some of them aren't hot takes. Some of them are just like just like really good advice. But I wanted a hot take. And if you don't know what that is, because I saw a couple in here that were like, I don't know what a hot take means. It basically means an opinion that you have that you think goes against what most people think. The status quo, the norm. If you have an opinion that goes against that, that would be considered a hot take, right? So I did see a couple that were really good ones in here though, so I'm excited. So without further ado, let's just do it. I'm not gonna say your names because some people are not about that, which is totally acceptable. So I'm just gonna read them, okay? So let's see. Ooh, the first one is actually really good. It says, this person says, it's a hot take. The idea of right person, wrong time. It isn't real. If they were the right person, fate would align it. Um, I do kind of, I I, I agree with that. I've always kind of thought wrong or what is it? Right person, wrong time. To me, it's a little bit of a stretch. Again, my opinion, I think, I, I personally don't think there's just like one person in the world that like is your person or mine. You know what I mean? Like there are many people I think I could have a successful, healthy marriage and life with. So I don't think it's like, 
oh, it doesn't work out with that person. Like you missed out. That's it. That was your person. Now there's nobody else. So that part of it, I, I definitely don't agree with like, uh, it was the wrong time. So you missed out on your right person. I also think too, things shouldn't be forced in relationships. I've said it before. Once things start to feel forced, it feels like you're trying to make it happen by your own hand and it's just not working. I think it's just not for you. It may feel that way because sure, that person could have been really good for you. You guys could have had a really good life together. Sure. No one's disqualifying that. But is that the one and only right person for you? I personally don't think so. So I would agree with that hot take, actually. Um, let's see. It's a hot take that falling in love is never a choice. Staying in love, it always is the choice. So falling in love is not a choice. Staying in love is. Um, I would agree. There's a saying and I'm not going to remember what it is, but it's like, don't fall in love. Is it walk in love? It's something like saying falling in love is dangerous because you're falling, you're, you know, you're not in control. It's more of like a, you know, it's more of like the infatuation stage and like the hard part comes when you have to stay in love, when you have to choose your person, when you have to you know, walk through the hard times, that shows your love more than just like anybody can fall in love, right? That's the easy part. Staying in love is the hard part and it requires work and it requires um, discipline and empathy and selflessness. So I would agree. Um, do you hear my cat in the background? I don't know what she's, oh, I don't know what she's doing. Okay, we're just gonna let her be. She's getting older now where I can kind of just like let her do her thing and she lets mom do her thing, but I'm sure she's going to get into some trouble um, very soon. Okay. Let's see. If they plan every date, especially in the beginning, at the last minute, they are not long-term material. I actually just went through this um, on a date that I went on last week. And all I'm going to say is if they can't plan a date, how do you expect them to plan a future? That's it. And that can go for any gender that can go for any like I'm old fashioned. So I like when the man plans, especially the first date, maybe the first like three dates. Right. And then it should be like a mutual. That's just my opinion um, or my preference, I guess. Um, but it, 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 that goes for anybody. Like if you can't plan a date, planning a date really isn't that hard. If they can't plan a date, especially in the beginning when you're trying to like that's when you're trying to like woo the person. How are they going to plan a future? It's just my opinion. Um, okay. It's a hot take to be okay to want to be a housewife slash want to be a wife. Or I'm sorry, want a wife who wants to be a housewife. I agree. I think that is so, that is so like subjective. That is a complete preference. And I agree that being a housewife or a stay-at-home mom or whatever, that is a job in and of itself. You may not be getting financially paid for it, but you're literally running your household and you are working from the minute you and your kids wake up to the minute they go to bed. Like if anything, that's like a longer work day. Um, so sure, it's old-fashioned, um, but if that is your your desire, right? Then you, ha you have to marry someone who has that same desire, who has that same, um, that same viewpoint on that subject, right? Otherwise it's not going to work. So that's kind of like what marriage is, right? You have to find like your twin flame and you have to agree on those things. So if you have two people that totally agree on that, it's totally okay. Um, I know some people, are like, it's 2024, like women should work and, and whatever. And if they want to, absolutely. But if they want to be a stay-at-home mom, also absolutely, right? It's just whatever works for your household, right? So I would agree. Um, okay, I'm looking for hot takes here. The talking stage should mean being taken. That's a complicated one. Because... <laughs> It depends on what you mean by the talking stage, which I don't even 
to be honest with you no disrespect to the person i think i know the person that wrote this we yeah i know who this is like i don't even like really saying the phrase talking stage to me it's either you're dating you're exclusive or you're in a relationship and i didn't understand that when i was younger people would always be like yeah we're dating but we're not boyfriend girlfriend and being young i was like what does that mean now i get it you're dating right but you're not exclusively dating so you could be kind of seeing other people right um and then you're exclusive you're choosing and that that the first one i mean like you've gone on like a date or two right after that i'm like okay i'm committed to you i want to see where this goes and that brings you to the exclusive stage where you're only dating each other and you're waiting to see like if it's gonna work and that's very very close there's like a little gray area there where like you're exclusive but are you boyfriend girlfriend yet um but I get it I get it so it depends on how you define the talking stage if it's like you've been on one date and you're texting but you've only met once I wouldn't be like yeah I have to be exclusive with you just because you don't know the person yet right and trust me i'm not i don't want to come across as like a serial dater i actually hate dating multiple people at the same time it's just i just don't like it it feels weird it feels unnatural but like i i get it right um so it it depends on how you define the talking stage but i do to a certain extent also agree i just think that if you're dating somebody and you see potential there like i would want to put all my energy there And that's that's the tricky part these days, because people always think the grass is greener somewhere else. So they want to talk to somebody else and they want to go on another date with somebody else and they want to explore all their options. They want to go explore the other grass rather than watering the grass that's in front of them. So that's the sticky area. So I could go multiple directions with that one, as I just did. That was me trying to, like, talk through it in my head. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of my thought on that one. It's a hot take that you should not be in contact with your exes. Oh, I agree. I know some some people are friends with their exes and I don't get it. I don't understand. Like, I, I mean, I guess if you end things nicely, right, then you'd still be friends. But I don't get that because the person that you're in in a relationship with next like are they going to be cool with you being buddies with your ex like i wouldn't be so i agree with that hot take i know some people can do it god bless i personally don't get it um i have one you know my high school boyfriend when i was like 16 like he'll wish me a happy birthday like i don't hate the dude and i was also 16 that was like a lifetime ago but like yeah i don't know i couldn't i couldn't do it so i agree for sure There are a couple in here I've seen talking about like the degree in which like I'll be faithful to my partner, but I will never let them allow, I will never allow them to go through my phone. And there's another one here on the opposite side that says it's a hot take that we should let each other see what's on each other's phones whenever we want. (sighs) Me personally, my opinion I am a person that, like, in relationships, I never have anything to hide, right? Unless I'm, like, su- like planning a surprise party for you or something. You know, that's the only thing I could think that I would want to keep something from you. Like, if it was a surprise to, like, benefit you and make you happy. Otherwise, I am, like, I, I want everything out in the open. Like, I have nothing to hide. So, I wouldn't mind, like, oh, hey, babe, I got a text. Can you read it to me? Like, can you go through my text and, like, read me that... I think I just hit my microphone, sorry. Can you read me the text that I just got or whatever? I think that that level of comfort should be there on both sides. But I think there's a fine line where it can become controlling. It it can become disrespectful. I had a friend when I was younger who had... That was in a relationship and he literally used to take her phone for like a couple hours and then they would like separate and he would go through everything that's abusive that's manipulative that's incredibly unhealthy so I think it has to be respectful I think it has to be mutual um 
it depends like when you're saying like I'll let you go through my phone that suggests that they're going through your phone to find something because they think they're going to find something that's the problem but if there's already a level a level of trust I should know your password you should know mine but not to go look for a problem just because we trust each other like yeah go go on my Spotify and play this song like I said like read me that text message whatever like that it's just a level of it just comes down to respect really and I think if you have anything to hide from your partner you shouldn't be in a relationship point blank simple so that answers my uh, opinion on that just because you met him at church doesn't mean he's good for you say it louder for the people in the back I will die on that hill just because he is a Christian, just because he goes to the same church as you does not mean he's your husband or vice versa. Does not mean she's your wife. You have to actually like the person. You have to be compatible. You have to have similar interests. You know, people are always like, just go find a nice like church boy. It's not that simple. <laughs> it's not that simple. You have to like each other. You have to be attracted to each other. You have to, you got a vibe. So I say that I die on that hill. I am with you. I am with you. Some people are just like, oh, the attraction will come after we're... No. If you have to force it, it's not for you. That's it. Sorry. I'm passionate about that one. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Give me a hot take. Give me a hot take. Give me a hot take. Okay. This one says, this might be a hot take. If it seems like there's a family versus significant other choice that has to be made too early, then it's a red flag. So I'm assuming by that it kind of means like if if you feel like your significant other has to choose between you and their family, it's a red flag. I would agree. I think it's different if you're just dating versus if you're married. Because if it's someone you don't know that well, like if it was a guy that I had only been dating for, I don't know, two months or whatever, like my family takes precedent, 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 not president, precedent over you. You know what I mean? But if it's a marriage, I think once you become married, like as weird as it sounds, this is my opinion. Maybe this is a hot take. I don't know. I could add this to the list. When you get married, your spouse becomes your family. Not to say that your family, your parents, your siblings, your aunts, your uncles are no longer your family. That's not what I'm saying. But once you get married, your household is now your family. That is your first priority. Everybody else comes after that's your that is your household especially when when you have kids that is your family they come first then everybody else comes after because when you're getting married you're becoming one you have to be selfless for that person you have to put them before you you have to like that's your priority so i think it depends on how long you've been together what the situation is um some families can also just like be toxic and like make the person choose when they shouldn't deserve it so it's not always the significant other's fault um, because of course there's like a level of guilt there um so it's it's hard it's it's I think it's just situational but that's kind of my take on like family versus like significant other type thing um like how many situations have you heard of where it's like a guy feels like he has to choose between his mom and his wife because his mom is like super close to him and like he was a mama's boy and blah 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 blah. it's like if you're even if you're like engaged but mostly when you're married like that's now your priority I think so the fact that I can't hear my cat oh I see her okay usually when I can't see her or hear her she's doing something bad but I think we're okay okay um let's see it may be a hot take that time is nothing. Three months of authentic love is greater than years of occasional good moments. Um, I mean, I would agree with that. I think I'm always like, you see things all the time, especially like it's a Christian, um, not stereotype. There's a, I guess, for lack of a better word, where it's like you meet and you get married like three months later, right? It's like a quick, quick sort of thing. People make jokes about it all the time. And everybody's like, when you know, when you, when you know, you know, you know, God will tell you God is in control. Like, and I, I get it. And maybe I don't understand it because I've never experienced that. Um, but I would always be hesitant 
if you have only known this person for like three, four months, even six months, even like anything less than a year to get married is 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 risky Uh, because you don't know that person. That's just my opinion because I've never experienced anything otherwise. I've been in relationships where you really don't know that person until a year, a year and a half in, and then you're kind of like, oh, you know, or you just, you have to live through enough life to know how compatible you are and how compatible you aren't. And I think, you know, my dad taught me this. He was like, you know, anybody, like I said in the beginning, like anybody could fall in love. Like the infatuation is easy. It's when you go through hard times. It's when you, when you, you experience the loss of a loved one when you experience sickness when you experience things like that how your partner supports you in those hard times is what shows their love that's the thing so you have to experience enough life i think to be able to be like okay yep this is the person i want to be with for the rest of my life so i i i I do agree that you can experience you can experience more love in three months than in a good healthy relationship than the amount of love you might experience in a long-term relationship that's only good sometimes like I would agree with that but I wouldn't necessarily say well this person didn't say anything about marriage I'm just kind of adding that that like doesn't mean that that should be your forever person yet so that's how I would take that um saying I love you before you're official is not a bad thing Ooh, I don't know if I, mm, I don't know if I agree with that. Um, I don't know if I agree with that, but maybe it's just again, because I haven't experienced it myself. But to me saying I love you is a big thing because I, again, it's like you have to be able to not confuse love with lust or infatuation. Um, love is, is not a feeling. Love is a choice. Love is an action. Love is putting that person before you. And it's like, are you really putting somebody before you when you're not even official? You know what I mean? Um, maybe I just haven't experienced it yet, but that one, that one is a hot take. That was, that was certainly a hot take. Um, okay, let's see. It may be a hot take that it's okay if your man is a, quote, dry texture or if you, (laughs) sounded like I said texture, dry texture or if you don't text much when y'all communicate well in real life. Um, do I, I mean, (sighs) some people are dry texters. I think the older you get to, like the older you go in dating, like people don't text the same way as like a teenager would. Um, so I'm not going to say that that would be like a bad thing all the time. Like I've dated people that weren't great texters. And for me personally, like that doesn't work because I, I, I like communication, not communication every five seconds of the day. But when there is communication, I need it to be good. I need it to feel like a flowing conversation. But it depends on what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Um, if you're dating somebody and they're a dry texter and it's bothering you and you think that it's, that it's not okay, either that person isn't for you or you can go to that person and you can say, Hey, I kind of need this to feel secure. I kind of need this like reassurance. Um, can you, can you, I was gonna say, can you try to like be better, but you also don't want to change. Like you, you don't enter into a relationship to change, to change somebody. You know what I mean? So it, that becomes sticky. It just depends on what you're willing to put up with and what you aren't willing to put up with and what's going to work for you and what isn't. Um, so I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker. Like it can be okay to date somebody who's not a good texter. And I think if you go to them and tell them that it bothers you and then nothing is changed or done about it, like they don't take your feeling about it into consideration, then that also tells you everything you need to know and maybe that's not your person. So relationship with give or take you got to learn each other's love languages and accommodate the best you can in my opinion this one said it's a hot take but don't get an animal together if you're not engaged or married i agree i agree and i know a lot of people that have done it um and then i know a lot of people that have regretted it because the relationship doesn't work out and then you have to essentially co-parent or one person you know 
misses out on the animal for the rest of the animal's life and it's like it almost feels like mourning the loss of a child because animals are like your child you can't tell me my cat's not my daughter you know what I mean um I just me personally like if you're not married you're not married so don't do married things if you're not married because you never know you never know what can happen you never know so just wait in my opinion so I agree I'm not going to say it's a bad thing if you do, but it's risky, I think. I personally wouldn't. Um, okay, hot take. If you need to go on a break with someone, you don't like them enough to be together. I have always said I don't believe in breaks. You're either together or you're not. Um, I think, I, I, I know situations of people that have broken up, like broken up completely and then gotten back together. That does happen. I'm not going to say it doesn't, but that's a complete breakup. When you're on a break, like look at Ross and Rachel, for example, we were on a break, friends reference. It's, it's a gray area. It's like, okay, well, what's allowed on this break and what isn't? Are we dating other people? If we're dating other people, if you're willing to let that person go and date other people to see if it works out, then I agree. You just don't want them enough my personal opinion. So I don't believe in breaks. Either you're together or you're not. And if you are together and you want it to work, then you put in the work because relationships are work. But you need two people who are willing to put in the same level of work for it to work. So I would agree with that one. Hot take. Porn is cheating. Flirting is cheating. Anything you have to lie about is cheating. I agree. I agree. Anything that you are hiding from your partner is cheating to a degree. I mean, there's a level between like, is it cheating? Is it just plain disrespectful or is it fine? Like, I feel like those are the three, the three levels. Um, But, you know, people will try to like, they'll be like texting somebody else. Like a guy will be, have a girlfriend and he'll be texting another girl or FaceTiming another girl. If you're hiding that from your girlfriend, even if you haven't kissed, even if you haven't slept together, even if you haven't even held her hand, it doesn't matter. To me, that's cheating because emotional cheating is a thing. It doesn't always have to be physical. Anything that you are hiding from your partner is cheating. The, um corn situation i don't know if i can say that word on youtube and i already said it once so i don't know if that's going to be a problem um the corn situation um i would agree because and there's that's a whole other topic but that stuff is so so harmful to not only yourself but any future relationship you have it's filling your mind with one fantasies that don't really exist And it's filling your mind with images that aren't your partner or who won't be your future partner. And you're teaching your brain that that's what you like. But you're never going to physically have that in front of you. So you're just setting yourself up for disappointment. That's a whole other topic. But I would agree that that 100% counts in this scenario. So I agree. Staying on the same wavelength, it's a hot take. If you cheat, it's okay. Just don't tell me. (laughs) Couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. That's all I'm going to say about that one. Um, Okay, let's see. Um, Okay, this one is, it's a hot take, but my, if my boyfriend doesn't have, doesn't have to post me, I'm sorry, my boyfriend doesn't have to post me on social media. As long as I'm not a secret, I don't mind not being posted. That's just, that's completely a, a, a preference. And it depends if he's not even like active on social media, then sure, of course, he's not going to post you. If he's posting, you might feel like forced. But if he's active on social media, and he's posting the boys and he's posting the things and everything, everything but you, I would feel some type of way personally it just that's completely situational um and it depends it depends it depends um but i wouldn't say that that's like a deal breaker but again it's your preference um ooh, this one's interesting it's okay to ask how much a man makes slash what his career is dot 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 off personal experience i wish i did um I mean, I think if you're dating somebody and you're dating to marry eventually, you're like, oh, could I spend the rest of my life with this person? That's something you need to talk about. Finances, that's not that one of the leading like causes of divorce. It's like people don't talk about their finances until they're already married 
you gotta talk about that um so I would agree but that like I think should come way later I don't think that should be anywhere remotely in the beginning stages of dating um I think it's just like a it's a human 101 101 thing like being human for dummies like you just I don't know you don't touch that right in the beginning but if it's really serious and that you're like leading towards oh I think I might like get engaged to this person I think you absolutely need to have those discussions they should know how much you make how much they make how much are you guys gonna save who's gonna pay what who's gonna where the finance is gonna come from what's save you know what are we gonna save those are things like People always say you have to have the hard conversations before marriage so that you can have an easier marriage. The hard part has to come beforehand because if you don't talk about these things and then all of a sudden you're married and you're like, wait, you make how much? I have to completely support our whole household. Well, that sucks. Don't let that be a surprise to you. Just figure that out beforehand, I think. So I am all for having the hard conversations, but only when it's like you're really like serious about this person, you know? Okay, um, let's see. I'm going to do a few more. It's actually, it's 10.30 in the morning. I have to go to work today, so I have to leave soon. Um, so we'll do maybe like two more. Let's see. Um, I don't even know if this one's a hot take. I think this one is just true. It's better to be single than settle. I agree. Oh, this is a good one. Living together before marriage is, and then they just put a bunch of like thumbs downs. It says, statistically, you're more likely to stay together if you don't live together before marriage. Um, I personally agree. That's a big hot take, especially today. And I don't, I would never like condemn somebody or judge somebody for doing it. Like I get it. I personally would like to wait to get, to move in together before, until we're like actually married um maybe engage like that's when you like buy your next place but then you like get ready to like move in once you're married just like preference wise for me like I would want to have something to like really look forward to after the wedding which is like moving in together and actually like becoming our household rather than waking up in our house being like all right let's go get married today and then come back to the same house you know what I mean I just think it's exciting to have something to look forward to that's just my personal preference um, but this goes back to like not doing the marry things before you're married. Um, I just think it's just it's it's the old fashioned in me. Um, I would personally just want to wait because I'm not one with you yet. We're not married. We're not we're not one. We're not a family yet. You know what I mean? Um, I'm also a big believer in not doing wifey things for a boyfriend if I'm just a girlfriend I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna do wife things you know what I mean like I'm not gonna cook for you every night or do laundry or all the things you know what I mean like I'm not your wife yet we're not a household you know it's just a it's just a preference and it's it's actually true I know I've heard that statistic where people end up staying together longer when they wait to get um they wait to move in together to get married my best friend Joanna and her husband did that and now they're happily living together they have their firstborn and they are just living their best lives and they're so happy that they did wait. Um, so I would agree with that one. And let's see. Um, this one says it's a hot take. Being shy after months of dating is not attractive. I wonder if that means like shy with your partner or shy with other people. Because I've seen where like a really outgoing person dates maybe a more shy person. And like after a while, you know, they're bringing them around their friends or whatever. And they're like, why are you not talking to my friends? Like, why are you just sitting there in silence? Luna is biting my feet. Okay, 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 okay. Let me just pick her up. Hold on. <sighs> okay. <laughs> her little teeth really hurt. Um, but that, that's a, that's a preference, right? I think it's just somebody who matches your energy, um, somebody who maybe is a little more in introverted and like doesn't speak at all to your friends or your family when you're out. That could be a problem, especially for somebody who is so extroverted. Um, if it's with you, I think it really just comes down to like what you want and what's going to work for you and what isn't, you know, um, and that's the point of dating so I'm not gonna say it's right or wrong to be shy I used to be a painfully shy person 
Um, and now I absolutely love talking to people and we'll talk to anyone and everyone. So it just depends. I think that's situational. I think that's, it's kind of just up to you. Um, and I, I always say, like, like I said before, you don't want to enter into a relationship and be like, I like this person, but I just want to change this about them. It's like, well, you don't really like them then. You know, you shouldn't be entering a relationship to change somebody. You should just love them for who they are. And if you feel like you have to change them, then that's not the person for you, in my opinion. So, um, because that's conditional, that's conditional love, right? You don't love them for them. You love the idea of them and that becomes dangerous. So, anywho, this was fun. I need to do more things like this. If you guys can give me more ideas of like interactive, um, topic ideas for the podcast I would really enjoy it because I know you guys like these videos better whenever I do like Q&A's or whatever I enjoy them I love hearing from you guys and it's just fun and you guys give me juicy things to talk about which is great so yeah please give me content ideas because honestly after this episode I don't have an idea for the next one and I always like to have at least two two ideas like at the same time like at a given time um and right now I don't so I need the the, the advice, the topic ideas. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening, for your support on this podcast and just my little baby channel over here. It's such a passion project of mine and I love making these for you. So I hope you'll keep watching them and I hope that you enjoy them. Um, and I will see you guys right back here in two weeks for episode 24. Until then, I hope you guys stay well and I love you and Jesus loves you more. <laughs> Bye guys.